Sweden's defense analyst, Ube Shabanda, was at the recent peace talks in Sweden. He joins me now in the studio. Ube, how much control, this is critical, of course, isn't it? How much control uh, do the two sides have over those who are doing the fighting? Well, this is absolutely critical. One thing that we have to remember is that there's a high level of hunger in Yemen. Tens of thousands have been killed. Just this year alone, some outside groups, monitoring groups, have said that around 20,000 have been killed. So this agreement, the ceasefire agreement for Hadeda uh, under the UN auspices, very much welcomed. But we do know here is that the government officials, when we were in Sweden, made it very clear to us that their forces were two kilometers away from the outskirts of Hadeda, and if the talks broke down, that their forces were ready to go back in. That led to street to house to house fighting, street by street fighting, and prior, prior fighting in, uh, in the prior conflicts for that city between the Iranian backed Houthi militants and the Saudi backed Yemeni government. That devastated that strategic port of Hadeda, made it very difficult for humanitarian aid to get to the Yemeni people who desperately needed. So, so far, this, this agreement under UN auspices seems to be working. What it means is that the UN is going to send peacekeepers to manage the Hadeda port and to ensure that both sides, both the Yemeni government and the Houthi militants, move outside the city itself. Now, most of the fighting up until this point has been taking place around the outskirts of Hadeda. That's made it very difficult for ships and international ships uh, to bring in food and aid to that area, which means the entire part of northwest Yemen controlled by the Houthi militants has not been able to receive um, humanitarian aid or has been able to receive it, but it takes a long time for that aid to get there. This could be a potential game changer for the Yemeni people at a very critical juncture in that war. How much are the shots being called in Riyadh and Tehran? Because as you say, the deal means that uh, the two forces, the troops, have to withdraw from Hodeida itself. Is there any evidence that that's already happening and how much direction will be coming from abroad? Well, during the talks in Sweden, that was the elephant in the room, the fact that the Houthis ha uh, have become much more closer to the Iranians. The Iranians reportedly provide weapons to the Houthi militants. And of course, the, uh, the Saudi-led coalition backs the Yemeni government. Even the Yemeni president, who's in exile, is mostly based in Riyadh. When he flew to Sweden, he flew from Riyadh. So it's a matter of a great game of power politics between Tehran and Riyadh. Both, both of those countries have to be fully invested with this UN plan. The, gov the Yemeni government told us what they want to see is the Houthis to stop firing ballistic missiles into Saudi Arabia. The Houthis want these, the international airport in Sana'a and the port in Hodeida to be opened up so that the Yemeni people that are still living under Houthi-controlled areas can receive that much-needed aid. That means that Saudi Arabia and Iran have to be fully invested in this UN plan. So far, it's working, but we have to see whether or not it can be sustained over time. Okay. Ube, thanks very much indeed for coming in. We appreciate it.